grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now was blind but now I, I see Hi. Good afternoon. Yes, hi. I'm John Martin. I'm not Pastor Martin. Anyway, it's a pleasure to see you all here. Um, Pastor Martin is elsewhere, but uh, don't worry. He's going to be here for the message today. Um, he's uh, videoed the uh, second part of his three-part series he's doing on grace. As a matter of fact, uh, he and Julie are up in the Phoenix area, and they're enjoying being with family when their daughter-in-law is receiving her master's degree today in speech pathology. So that's, that's a really nice thing that he was able to do that. Now, past, Pastor Ken, on the other hand, is just on vacation. So uh, <laughs> we won't let him off quite that easy. Anyway, on behalf of the musicians, the staff, the people that put together our worship services, the people that keep our church going, we are absolutely thrilled and blessed that you're worshiping with us this Saturday. It is so... I don't know the right word, heartening, to remember how far we have come from just a little over a year ago when we had to announce that the church was closing. And so, again, from me, from the council, from everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Whether you're here in person or if you're out there uh, watching us online, then please continue to do so. A couple announcements before we get started with the uh, service today. One, cell phones off, please. Um, and I also mentioned that Pastor Martin's gone. Oh, by the way, 
happy Mother's Day weekend. How about a big hand for all the mothers, all the mother figures, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. And I'd like to point out that the mother, Mother's Day paraments, I never knew this word, but up here on the altar and on the um, uh, cul- pulpit there, Um, were created by the women of Desert Hills Lutheran Church and have been a a tradition for many years on Mother's Day weekend. So we're we're great to see them up there again today. A reminder that we don't do a physical offering, passing of the plates uh, currently, but we do have our boxes in the back to receive your offerings. And I will also mention that um, you continue to be a most generous and giving congregation that really helps us continue our mission of making the difference. Um, We have our protocols in place with our optional masks here, with our um, uh, sections back here where masks are required. We're gonna be making some minor changes to our protocols effective next week, next weekend after the uh, 15th. It won't change the worship. We will still do this, uh, mass optional, except in those areas and the people who still feel most comfortable wearing a mask at all times, still feel free to use the north entrance uh, over there to come and go. But people after next weekend visiting the church for business, meetings, events, masks will be optional. So there'll be more information on that coming out by email and on our website this coming week. And as we always do before we start our service, we welcome guests and visitors by introducing ourselves to you through the mission of Desert Hills Lutheran Church. At Desert Hills Lutheran Church, as individuals and as a congregation, we love to celebrate. We like to make and discipleships an individual thing. It's our own faith journey. And as we mature and grow in our faith, we invite others along. And then through celebrating grace and through discipleship, we gather as individuals and groups and we strive to make a, thank you, celebrate grace, make disciples, uh, making a difference. That's Desert Hills Lutheran Church's DNA, folks. That's who we are. So, no more announcements. I'll open with prayer, and we'll start our service. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, you met one night with a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus, and you spoke for the first time of being born again. You said that we can never see the kingdom of God without being born again. We pray that we continue to be born again. We ask a blessing on this time of worship and on everyone here. Amen. In the highways, in the hedges, in the highways, in the hedges in the highways in the hedges I'll be somewhere working for my Lord I'll be somewhere working I'll be somewhere working I'll be somewhere working for my Lord
I want to ride a ride a ride that glory train. Yes, all I want to do when my life on earth is through is to get up on and ride that glory train. There's a railroad train that's leaving, just rolling down the track. And the passengers have bought it, boy, they're never coming back. It's a glory train that's leaving, it's a train I long to ride to the home way up in heaven where God's children all abide. I want to ride that glory train. I want to ride, a ride, a ride that glory train. Yes, all I want to do when my life on earth is through is to get up on and ride that glory train. Hear the thunder of the engine, get aboard her if you can. For the final destination is that far off promised land where the master will be waiting in his home way up above. Just fill our hearts with gladness and this great eternal love. I want to ride that glory train. I want to ride a ride a ride that glory train. Yes, all I want to do when my life on earth is through is to get up on and ride that glory train. When you get down to the station and the train's about to leave, you be sure to have a ticket if you really do believe that the master's waiting for you in his home way up above just to fill our hearts with gladness and his great eternal love. I want to ride that glory train. I want to ride, a ride, a ride that glory train. Yes, all I want to do when my life on earth is through is to get up on and ride that glory train. Now there was a passage named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Around me many are building temples of beauty and wealth. But what of a temple in heaven 
Where will you live after death? Are you building a temple in heaven To live in when this life is o'er? Will you move to that beautiful city And live with Christ evermore? So long is the road that leads you to that beautiful land up there Is work on your temple completed Death may be lingering near Are you building a temple in heaven To live in when this life is o'er Will you move to that beautiful city And live with Christ evermore? In my office, I have two posters on the wall. Uh, both of the posters come from stewardship campaigns that we've had here at Desert Hills. Uh, they're both scenes from movies because we used to do, um, stewardship was we'd, we'd take a movie. Now, these two movies both have to do with being born again. And I just love to talk about being born again. The first movie is a 1946 movie, It's a Wonderful Life, starring Jimmy Stewart, Donna Reed. Um, it's a story of George Bailey who got a second chance at life. He literally was born again um, into a world where he had never existed. So he gets to see how he makes, a, how his living makes a difference in his life. So he's born again. The second movie is A Christmas Carol. This was a 1984 movie with George C. Scott as Ebenezer Scrooge, who on Christmas Eve is visited by three ghosts, and when he awakens, he takes his awakening as being born again, and he's completely changed, and he lives his life differently because he was born again. I love stories where people hit the rock, hit rock bottom, are completely transformed by a moment of grace and they believe that they have been born again and that they can start over and live in a new way and they have a whole new perspective about life. So, where did this whole thing about being born again come from? It came right from Jesus. He, Jesus is the author of Born Again. And... Uh, it came about at the beginning of Jesus' ministry in the Gospel of John uh, because in chapter 3, Nicodemus, who is um, the top Pharisee of the city, we sometimes forget that he was like a uh, religious celebrity in Jerusalem. He was a member of the highest court in Jerusalem, the Sanhedrin, which had 70 members, and the Sanhedrin is uh, a court of Israel like uh, Parliament, the Supreme Court, and the Vatican all rolled up into one. It's, it's the highest court of the land, except for the Roman court. 
Now, Pharisee was a religious sect that believed in the holiness of God and the holiness of behavior by obeying all the laws of Moses and then some. Super religious. Down through the centuries, however, Pharisee has come to mean something quite different. Uh, Self-righteousness, sanctimonious, legalistic. But be that as it may, the top dog in that time with Jesus was Nicodemus. So, there was a disturbance in the force. There was a dark wind blowing. There was a new rabbi in town, a new miracle-working rabbi in Jerusalem, who was also a carpenter from Galilee and Capernaum. They were saying that his teaching was astonishing, that his authority was undeniable, that his insights into the kingdom of God were fresh and compelling. And that he could heal people with a single word or a single touch. People were even beginning to use the M word. The M word. Messiah. The Messiah. The promised king that would destroy Rome. And would bring back the glory of King David only without the soap opera stuff. Or the kingdom of Solomon without his harem. That this Messiah king would transform the whole country. So they don't know if Jesus is the one or not. So Nicodemus pays him a visit at night. And usually when you pay someone a visit at night, you want to keep that visit secret. And I'm sure that Nicodemus wanted to keep it secret. So... Nicodemus comes, Jesus meets with him, and he immediately starts off with flattery. In uh, John 3, it says, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one can, no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. So, he's using flattery on him. But what Nicodemus really wants to know is who he is. Is he a prophet? Is he a rabbi? Is he a holy person? What is he? But before Nicodemus can speak another word, Jesus interrupts him and speaks about being born again for the first time in history. So in John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he has been born again. You can't see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. What? <laughs> in this one sentence, Jesus overturns Nicodemus' whole belief system and whole life. This is absolutely new. Nicodemus believed that as a Jew, that he was born into the kingdom of God. Physically born into it. If your parents were Jewish, you were Jewish. You were born into it. Everyone else had to be converted. Everyone else had to study the Bible. Everyone else, um, if you were male, had to be circumcised. And then to be washed clean or, or have a baptism. Nicodemus tried to regroup. And he stuttered around something because now anybody could enter the kingdom of God. And that wasn't part of what Nicodemus believed. So, you know, he's kind of stuttering around. and said, well, how can you go back into your mother's womb and be born again? That's just dumb. But I think he was trying to figure out what this rabbi Jesus was talking about. And basically Jesus says there must be water, there must be spirit, and there must be belief to be born again. Then the last thing that Jesus says is a great foreshadowing. And it's important that we, we hear this also. 
Jesus says this, no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. Well, what Jesus is saying is, yes, the M word applies to me. I have been born from above. I'm Messiah. Then in verse 14, and then Jesus continues, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Most of us don't know that story. That story is from Numbers 21. The people of God had become obnoxious and weren't believing and suddenly there were poisonous snakes everywhere. And in order to get rid of the snakes, uh, God told Moses to craft a bronze snake, put it on a pole, lift it up high so that everyone could see it. And if the people looked at it, they would live. So we go back to verse 14. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. He will be lifted up. Well, he's talking about the cross. He will be lifted up. Believing and trusting God is eternal life right now. That's part of being born again. Well, the nighttime conversation ends. It just abruptly ends. Uh, I believe it's in chapter 8. Chapter 8 or 9, Nicodemus shows up and, and says one thing. But then something profound happens at the end of the Gospel of John in chapter 19. Joseph of Arimathea, who is a disciple of Jesus, asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Then he and Nicodemus, yep, that Nicodemus, who brought a hundred pounds of myrrh and aloes to prepare the body for burial. A hundred pounds is an extraordinary expensive amount of, of um, burial uh, chemicals. <laughs> the two then laid Jesus in a tomb in the garden, this is in chapter 19, near where he had been crucified. Why is this important? Because Nicodemus would have seen the body and prepared the body so that he could say, no, Jesus, Jesus had died. And because he was with Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, it would appear at this point that the late night visit, talking about being born again, that Nicodemus had become a believer. Or not positive, but it sure seems that way. That's the last we hear. That's the last verse. And then the next verse reads, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the stone. So we go in two verses from the death and burial in the garden to the resurrection, to an empty tomb. So, what has this got to do with us? What does born again have to do with us? There's some people that say, well, yeah, you, you have to be born again, and it happens once. Others say, well, born again is part of the baptism. Um... I think Jesus is saying that we can't see what God is doing until we have been born again or until we believe. Born again is to believe, but to believe what? Well, it's to believe that he was lifted up, that he willingly gave his life for the world out of love and that we can receive forgiveness because of this event, and we ourselves can have a new beginning and to be born again. But there's, there's, there's more to it than that. There is more than just believing to born again. There's more to it than that. Several years ago, there was a prominent evangelist who came to Jackson, Mississippi, 
for a series of evangelistic meetings and he was getting some of the pastors from Jackson uh, together so that they could partner with him in this, and I don't know, like a tent meetings. So when he finished with his presentation, he asked if there were any questions. And an old African-American preacher rose to speak, uh, you know, of, of the clergy there, and he said, Preacher, just what do you hope to accomplish in this town anyway? What do you hope is going to happen here? Can you tell us that? What do you want to have happen here? The evangelist shot back and said, I want to see every citizen of Jackson, Mississippi become a born-again Christian. To that, the old black preacher said this. Now he says it a little differently. He says, Mister, ever since I was a little boy, there have been people who have treated me like dirt. Folks who made me feel like less than nothing when they cheated me and talked to me like I was a nobody. And you know what? Most of these folks call themselves born-again Christians. And now you're telling me that you want everybody in Jackson to be like them. Nope. Now that's me saying it, not the, the evangelist. Now when we are born again, we live differently. We speak differently. We act differently. We pray differently. Because we want to make a difference because we know that we've received grace and because we want to be like the one who allowed us to be born again, Jesus. We want to make a difference and when we fail, we repent and we are forgiven. You see, being born again means to me that we're born again, and again, and again, and again. So the assignment, <laughs> make a difference this week in Jesus' name. Why? <laughs> We've been born again. Amen. Who can take the beggar man off the streets Give him clean clothes and food to eat God can I know God can Who can take the heart, turn bitter and cold Make it brand new so it shines like gold God can I know God can Take away all your pain Make the sunshine chase the rain Yesterday, today, and forever the same All you gotta do is just call His name Who can help the lost be born again In the darkest night let the light shine in God can I know God can who can reach down to the trembling hand Of the wondering child who can understand God can I know God can God can take away all your pain Make the sunshine chase the rain Yesterday, today, and forever the same All you gotta do is just call His name Take away all your pain, make 
sunshine chase the rain Yesterday, today, and forever the same All you gotta do is just call his name Please remain seated as together we reaffirm our faith. We believe in God the Father who has revealed himself to us through his love, compassion, and his forgiveness. In his mercy, he has redeemed us because he is merciful. We believe in Jesus Christ who gave himself in life and in death to save us from our sins. In Christ's name and by his grace, we accept our mission, witness, and service to all people. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who has been poured out upon us by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Justified by grace through our faith, we believe in the hope of eternal life. Amen. Listen to the words of the psalmist in Psalm 33. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. We offer our thanks and prayers and gifts of time, talent, and treasure for your mission in the world, Lord to bring good news and help and hope to all people. We pray for members of our congregation. New to the prayer list this week is Eileen Dom, the family and friends of Pat Campbell, and the family and friends of Valerie Hale. Leaving the prayer list with thanksgiving for your healing are Wayne Blake and Don Cherland. We continue our prayers for the 59 still on our prayer list. To all in need of healing, Lord, grant peace, grant comfort, healing, and hope. Lord, we pray for our country. We pray for our new interim, Pastor Ron Klusenkamp. We pray for the continued vaccines and the end of lockdowns and masking. Today especially, Lord, we give you thanks for all the mothers. We give thanks for their work and sacrifice and love. We remember our own mothers and ask your blessing on all of them. Finally, Lord Jesus, we give thanks that we can be born again, that by belief in you, we can see your kingdom here and now, and in seeing it, we live accordingly. We ask that you walk with us through this new week. In your name we pray. Amen. Join together with me now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I put my feet on the rock, my name on the road. When it's called up yonder, I won't worry about my soul. I know my home is waiting, and it's something to behold. I put my feet on the rock, my name on the road. If you never Like that before, you know the message 
comes in many ways Those simple words of wisdom Can open heaven's door So every time I get the chance I say Come on and put your feet on the rock Your name on the road Jesus said, as God has sent me, so I send you. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.